play to save the season to throw. Fire! Got a little bit of an echo there. All right. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Lightning Round Podcast. Craig and I are here on a beautiful Wednesday evening to talk about the line. Can you hear that echo? Mm-mm. We we are here to talk about the, the linebacker and edge class. Um, and we have we're going to break down three linebackers and three edge players and give our sleepers in each category. So want to start off by apologizing for the late start here. I know this is kind of becoming our thing, although it's definitely not intentional. Uh, We had some, uh, some visual aids ready to go that we were having a hard time getting uploaded into the system. So we're going to kind of piece it together as we go, but we want to thank everybody for joining us and Craig, how are you doing tonight? I'm good, man. And I'm sure everyone's going to give us a pass. We're just trying to add to the production value a little bit. And sometimes things don't go as smoothly as we'd like, but we have the best of intentions. So grant us some grace. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So we are going to get started here and we are going to share a screen so you guys can see the slides that I put together. And we're going to start with Edgerin Cooper, the linebacker from Texas A&M. So, Craig, why don't you start by telling us what you saw in Cooper, what you liked, what you didn't like, and we'll go from there. Yeah, for sure. So, right off the bat, we're talking about one of the fastest off-ball linebackers in the class, bar none. Um, He's really fearless when attacking downhill against the run. Um, When he reads it, there's almost no hesitation to trigger. Uh, I think he has pretty good length from what I can see on, on film. And it helps him extend and make tackles outside of his frame and in the open field. So even if he doesn't really square guys up perfectly, he can still wrap them up and get them down. Uh, He's also definitely more of a violent tackler than a grab and takedown guy. So I really like that. It's not a guy that's afraid of contact and throwing his body around. Um, More often than not, he's looking to plaster really whoever he makes contact with. So I'm sure that's something that a guy like Jim Harbaugh and that coaching staff would uh, appreciate greatly. He plays that type of football. That's definitely their style. Um, He's got serious linear twitch that really jumps out when he's used as a blitzer. So like you can deploy him as a weapon from the second level uh, for defenses that like to be aggressive against the run or an obvious, like got to have it passing down. You can use him as a weapon in that way. And more often than not, um, he takes pretty solid angles to ball carriers. And when you combine that with the closing speed, the gaps, um, and airspace, he can close those down really quickly. Uh, and ball carriers can't really react. There's not enough time. So with all of the things that he does really well, um, there are a few things that concern me a bit. Um, he has a tendency to play a little high and he doesn't really possess the best change of direction, even though he's really, he's a really good athlete. The hip fluidity isn't perfect. Uh, even though he has decent length, he still struggles to disengage with blocks. So he's going to have to work on that at the next level because those bigger guys get their hands on you. And it's really, really difficult to detach and uh, get in on plays. He can be flushed out or really just kind of negated altogether. Uh, he runs super hot sometimes to the point to where he'll actually take himself out of a play. Like there's no governor on this dude at all. He only knows one speed. And uh he can be taken advantage of in play action because of that also. So he's such a see ball, get ball, like run and chase guy that he can be manipulated into taking false steps and um, opening really wide passing windows. He's also kind of a bit of a one year wonder. He really came on in 23. So we're looking at a player who's potentially still just scratching the surface. Um, I like Cooper. Uh, there are some things that remind me a little bit of Kenneth Murray, just a little bit. Um, he's not 
like devoid of instinct. So, you know, that's a plus. So I don't want to necessarily put him um, in that lane. But uh, again, I liked him. I gave him a 77 overall. So I'm looking at him as like an early third round, uh, maybe late second. But uh, it's just the way that the grades panned out. He'll probably go somewhere in the second. I wouldn't be shocked. I think you're on mute, Jamie. One sec, folks. He's muted up. <laughs> All right. Well, while he's working on that, still talking a little bit more about Cooper. Um, I just think he's a phenomenal athlete uh, with his ability to kind of click and close, having those instincts to be able to play off of as well. Uh, as far as a fit in a Chargers defense, I think, Besides the fact that he, you know, is a hard nosed player, not afraid to make contact, I think at the second level, he can be coached up to kind of clear up some of those deficiencies. And um, it's more about, again, like I said, him ascending as a player, utilizing those skills, but also being coached up to be a little bit more technically sound. I'm still muted. Sorry, folks, bear with this as well. Here we go. I'm there back. You are. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep, I can hear you. Okay. Sorry about that. Having all kinds of issues here today. My bad. Mm -hmm. Anyway, what I was starting to say was, is I think we're on the same boat mostly with, with uh, Cooper. He's got, there's a lot to like about him. First of all, you love the frame, you know, long, lean, very athletic. Uh, there's still room to add some bulk. Like you mentioned, he's he charges downhill and run support. Once he understands what he's seeing, he attacks it downhill and he looks to punish guys. Uh, he's a very physical, reliable tackler. Uh, he shows up both at inside linebacker and on the edge. Um, he can be productive as a spy because of his athleticism and ability in pursuit. Uh, very effective as a as a blitzer. Um, excellent in backside pursuit. And he's able to finish outside of his frame better than a lot of the linebackers in this class. Uh, in my opinion, I think he's going to be a guy who has the ability to make plays sideline to sideline because of his athleticism and his ability to run. Um, and I think he's also got a demonstrated ability to turn and run with backs and tight ends. He's pretty good in coverage, better than you would expect some guys coming out of college, in my opinion. Uh, <clears throat> in terms of areas of weakness, I think the biggest thing and this is kind of common with a lot of these linebackers. He's not devoid of instincts, but I wouldn't say his instincts are necessarily like high level. They're still developing in a lot of ways. Um, he can struggle to identify blocking schemes and deconstruct blocks. Uh, he's hyper reactive to every movement of the quarterback, the ball carrier and the offensive line. So if the offensive line's flowing one way, he's probably going to flow that way too more, more often than not. He'll get fo fooled by window dressing quite a bit. Because he's looking to blow guys up and because he's such a good athlete, I feel like his angles can use, his pursuit angles can use a little bit of an improvement. Um, he kind of, he'll run himself out of some plays here and there. And um, he tends to lunge into tackles, like you, like you mentioned. He tackles high, tries to, tries to kind of launch himself and tackle guys around the neck. I'm sure that's something a good NFL coach is going to fix. Um and he can be slow to find the ball and he'll lose track of it at times in the running game. Uh, like you mentioned, he'll fall for the, for the play action pass quite a bit. I, I have an 80 on Cooper. Uh, he's my number two running back. Um, so I'm looking, you know, late second, early third round pick for him. Awesome. Yeah. So we're pretty much in the same lane with him with regards to how we view him, just hyper athletic. And I think that kind of goes along with the theme for at least the first couple of these guys, which kind of leads us into the next guy we're going to discuss here, is Peyton Wilson. So I'll, I'll let you kick that one off, Jamie. Yeah. So Wilson's a guy who, again, you love the athleticism in the frame. He's um, he's got sideline to sideline range. He's tall. He's rangy. He's long. He has the ability to make tackles outside of his frame. Um, he shows the ability to weave through traffic to get to ball carriers. He's able to finish, like I mentioned, outside of his frame. Will probably be a really good blitzer. 
um, with good NFL coaching. Uh, he plays off the ball and edge a lot like Cooper. So that's a decent edge when he's asked to do so. I don't think it's really his strong point, but it's not bad. Um, he hustles every play. The motor runs hot no matter what. Very good in backside pursuit. I think he's got the potential to be really good in coverage uh, with better coaching because of uh, the athleticism and the range and the ability to make plays. And he's got the lateral quickness to dart past blockers, and he shows really good ball skills and coverage, in my opinion. Um, some things to work on, I think, you know, obvious or at least areas of concern. He had a major knee injury in high school and had a shoulder injury in college. So he's still, he's missed a lot of time and he's still developing in a lot of ways. Uh, um, Wilson's a guy who is hyper reactive to motion, just like Cooper, uh, misdirection and play fakes will get him. He'll lose track of the ball and get pulled out of position. There are times when he looks a little overreactive or a little jumpy in zone coverage. Uh, he wasn't asked to play much man to man. He plays very upright, can get knocked off balance. Uh, and he'd rather run around blockers at times and take them on. He doesn't have great awareness for oncoming blockers. He can struggle to shed and is more of a blitzer than a pass rusher. Uh, he won almost entirely based on athleticism in college. So I think the instincts are something that's going to have to develop. I Wilson's a guy who was fun to watch. He's a good athlete. I think he's got a chance to be a playmaker at the next level. I have a 77 on him. Okay. Yeah. So again, the theme of the night, at least early on, is going to be athleticism because this is another guy that has that in spades. Um, I mean, we're talking from a size perspective, what is he, 6'4", like 233 pounds. So um, though it sounds like a heavier guy, I mean, 233 isn't humongous, but for a linebacker that's decent size, he's got really good height. He He's kind of lean in his build. So um, he doesn't really look like your prototypical. He, he definitely looks like an off-ball linebacker. He doesn't look like traditional of Mike linebacker, but he's probably the best overall athlete in the class. Um, hyper decorated, uh, buckets and Chuck Bednarik award winner. And he was asked to do a lot at NC State. Um, they played a fair amount of three, three, five. So we're talking about being tasked with not only defending the run and covering, but also rushing the passer more often than you, you would expect from uh, most off ball linebackers. And uh, dude was a multi-sport athlete, played lacrosse and was a wrestler. So those are two sports that if you have the traits to excel in, they translate really well into football. Uh, very good in space, almost always under control. Um, and he he excels in one-on-one -on -one open field situations at the second level. I would say he's a jack of all trades, and that's not a bad thing. Um, he's really adept at attacking downhill and pursuing sideline to sideline and transitioning into a cover guy. There's no real hitch from his short back pedal at the second level and turning and running with tight ends or receivers in the slot. And he's a solid wrap up tackler. So, I mean, you can see where that wrestling background serves him pretty well there. Um, as far as the negatives, uh, you got to start with the injuries. I mean, you mentioned that already. And it's like a bit of a laundry list dating all the way back to his high school days. Um, he has two ACL tears, surgeries on both of his shoulders. Um, Dude is like the new age six million dollar man, and I probably just dated myself. Some of you guys will get that out there, most of you probably not. I don't know, it depends on the audience. But, um, he has somewhat of a slender build, like I said before, and it hurts him as a run defender because he struggles to shed blocks and he'll need to be kept clean at the second level, so he'll benefit playing behind like a larger defensive front. I think that's where he'll shine. Uh, and he's much better at maneuvering around blocks. Uh, to meet ball carriers and engage them instead of taking blocks head on. That's not really his bag. And while he can be used as a blitzer, he doesn't really possess like the functional strength to be consistently effective if he meets contact on his way to the QB. Uh, I would say that he really hit his stride last year, becoming more of an all around second level player. Like the athleticism has always been apparent, but this year he really settled in and um, came into his own this year. And I liked Peyton Wilson quite a bit. I actually gave him closer to a mid second round grade. I gave him an 84. All right. So somebody that we differ on a little bit, um, somebody we both like, but you're a little higher on him. So that's good. Little, mm -hmm. little variety, little, little, um, Something to talk about here. So, Spice of life, man. Yeah. <laughs> so um, tell me what you think, how you think he might fit in the Chargers defense. So that's an interesting question because I personally feel like they need more of 
uh, if you have to sacrifice some athleticism for someone who's a little bit more of a thumper, um, I think that's the route that they would go or would need to go. Um, you've got Denzel Perriman right now, but you probably need his successor. And I don't think that currently exists on the Chargers roster right now. <sighs> It'd be hard to turn down someone like that um, with that ability. The injury history probably is a little scary, but as far as the fit is concerned, um, I, I don't... It'd be hard to say no, but I would probably pass on him in favor of someone else that we'll talk about in a bit. But as far as he fits, yeah, but I think there's like a little better fit for them here coming up soon. All right. Yeah, I think they're probably going to lean more towards a thumper than a super athletic guy, which is why we're <clears throat> why the next person we're going to talk to talk about made our list. So, Craig, why don't you go ahead and introduce Michigan linebacker, Junior Colson for us. And hell of a segue because this is the exact guy I'm talking about. <laughs> I know. And it's not just because he played in that scheme already. I mean, it's an advantage. It's definitely a plus. It gives him a leg up. But six foot two, 200, near 40 pound guy. Uh, he's probably, I'm going to be a little biased here, but still, he's probably my favorite all around linebacker in the class. Um, tough as nails. The dude will play through anything if he can get clearance to be on the field. Uh, he fits the profile um, and passes the eye test from a build perspective. Like he played middle and off ball linebacker in Michigan, but he just looks like what you'd expect from a typical uh, Mike linebacker. Super well proportioned frame, stout enough to be a, a run game deterrent at the second level. Um, he doesn't really dance or look to sidestep blocks in the run game. He'll stonewall a lineman or fullback, even if it means creating just space for another linebacker or safety or a recovering D lineman to make a play on the ball carrier while he, he just sits there and kind of eats up a little bit of space to free everyone else up. Um, he's athletic enough to shoot gaps and finish in the backfield, but also roam sideline to sideline. So he's got a little bit of everything in his bag. Super solid tackler also. He rarely fails to finish once a uh, ball carrier is in reach. Um, I think he's fairly cerebral pre-snap. He just seems like a guy that's very well prepared week to week and does a really solid job helping the defense stay on schedule. Um, also like him, we're talking as a pass defender, I like him in zone. He's got really good spatial awareness and range, and he won't often bite on play fake. So, uh, again, just someone who has a decent understanding of what's happening in front of him. Uh, for all of those things that I complimented on, there are a couple of things that he still needs to work on. There aren't a ton, but uh, I think he still needs work as a run defender, like, he shows the ability to detach, but too often he's just content with muddying up the middle as opposed to making the play. So it's great that he's willing to take on the blocks to free up others to make plays. But I would much rather see him, you know, figure out how to detach more often and get his hands on ball carriers. Um, I'm not going to call it selfish. Just, again, be more of a playmaker in the middle. Also think he might be a little bit more instinctual than he is athletic and that's not to say that he's not a good athlete he's just not to the level of like a peyton wilson or edron cooper um it shows in a few instances when he's caught out of position his reaction time and change of direction don't come off as fluid uh but also something that really caught my attention is he's surprisingly versatile uh, he played 50 plus snaps in the slot each of his last two seasons and he held up very well in coverage. So it speaks again to uh, not just someone who's an athlete, but has an understanding of where he's positioned and the techniques associated with those positions. He's not the same player everywhere you place him. So I think he has some really good versatility in that way. Um, again, like I said, a little biased, like probably my favorite all around linebacker. Uh, I gave him an 80. So, you know, uh, late second round grade, maybe early third round. I would not be shocked to see other teams fall in love with him and maybe push him up the draft boards into more of a second round guy. He's the guy that I hope personally the Chargers get. Like, they're two in between he and Sarah still. I'd be fine with either one. But if they got their hands on Colson, I would not be mad at all. So this is another guy that we're going to differ on a little bit. Um Colson for me, I think, you know, there's some things to like for sure. Um, powerfully built, really strong hands and upper body, uh, able to take on and fight through blockers, possesses functional strength to finish tackles. Um, he's very comfortable and productive in zone coverage, uh, something that stood out to me. Uh, he gets good depth, watches the quarterback eyes, and he really tries to disrupt passing lanes. And he's surprisingly quick and able to jump from one lane to the next. Um, to break up passes. 
He shows the ability uh, to stick with backs um, in man coverage and to, and some tight ends. Has decent range, but his range isn't what I would call great. Uh, good short area quickness to dart past blockers in the run game. Uh, kind of more of a downhill thumper than the sideline to sideline guy that you see in Cooper and and Wilson. Some of the things that I didn't care for with Wilson, um, I think he can be slow to identify and react to blocking schemes. Uh, he's He can be slow to locate and pursue ball carriers at times. Uh, I think he's generally late to trigger. He'll, he'll get caught flat, put, flat footed by blockers or run into climbing blockers in pursuit. There's some hip tightness that shows up in his tape, making change of direction uh, a challenge for him. So sometimes tackling in space, I thought, could be an issue for him. He'll overrun tackles in the run game uh, and offers very little as a blitzer or a pass rusher. Uh, probably is not going to make too many plays outside of the box in the NFL, in my opinion. So he was – I have a 72 on Colson, so I'm a little lower on him than you are. I think he's kind of along the same lines of – what they got when they drafted Perriman um, several years ago. He's kind of that hammer in the middle, uh, but I think there's there's still some room uh, for him to grow in his game. Just questioning some of the athleticism and and his ability to make some of those sideline to sideline plays. It's interesting that you mentioned Perriman because me being a Miami fan, Perriman being a Hurricane, he was one of my fouls elated when the Chargers drafted Perriman. So much so, I loved his game so much so in college that I overlooked the fact that he was probably going to be a liability on third down. He's probably more of a two-down linebacker, somebody who's going to have to come off the field in nickel situations. Um, Colson's game reminds me a little bit. He's not quite the hammer that Perriman was, but flip side to it is, is that he does have that athleticism to cover um, whether it be more so in zone than man. But uh, I think I just kind of fell in love with the style of the player. So, like I said, maybe a little bit of a bias there for me. But I think, again, <laughs> he fits really well in the defense because he'll know what he's doing from day one. And I think it helps him to overcome some of those uh, shortfalls. And he can definitely improve. We definitely all have our biases. So I, I get that. Um so why don't we go ahead and list our top four linebackers in this class? So why don't you go ahead, starting at four, tell us who your top four linebackers are. Yeah. So top four, got Peyton Wilson from NC State with an 84. At number two, Junior Colson from Michigan with an 80. At three, we've got Edrin Cooper, Texas a and with a 77. And my number four linebacker, Jeremiah Trotter, out of Clemson to 75. All right. So my top four linebackers are, I have Tyron Hopper, who is my sleeper. I'll be talking about in a minute with a 73. Peyton Wilson is number three with a 77. Edgerin Cooper is number two with an 80 and Cedric gray from North Carolina is my number one with an 82 big fan of Cedric gray. Thought he was a lot of fun to watch. Funny that you mentioned that because even though he's not in my top four, he's just outside of it, and I love him as well. And he's one of those guys that if he slips through the cracks, I would be ecstatic if the Chargers get their hands on. Uh, just a lot to like about his game. Uh, when you look at the grading side of things, sometimes like athleticism and certain things can get knocked and knock a guy down a couple of uh, prongs there. But from a play standpoint, on field linebacker, to me, he's probably – the most consistent of the bunch. And as far as making plays, just bar none, he just always seems to be in the right place at the right time. Yeah. Amen. He's a really, really good player and somebody who I think is going to excel if he lands in the right system in the NFL. So my sleeper, my linebacker sleeper is Missouri linebacker, Tyron Hopper. Um, somebody who was ultra productive in college. He's a little on the older side. I think if I'm not mistaken, he played five years at Missouri. Uh, Hopper is a guy who's extremely twitchy. Uh, he's kind of a traits guy. Um, best, I think arguably the best click and close ability in the class. His first two steps are extremely explosive. He takes really intelligent pursuit angles, uh, kind of plays like his hair is on fire. He's just got that endless motor and energy that defenses feed off of in the middle. Um, definitely fast enough to cover tight ends and wide receivers and some slot receivers, uh, in man coverage. 
contributes as a downhill run stopper, a sideline to sideline playmaker, and a blitzer. He explodes through ball carriers and finishes with authority, really punishes people when he hits them, uh, and might also have some pass rushing upside with some NFL, with NFL coaching. Right now, he's really more of a blitzer than a pass rusher, but with his athleticism and his twitchiness, I think he's a guy who could really ascend into more of a a situational pass rusher and an extra edge piece as well, kind of a kind of a chess piece that you can move around. I think from a weakness standpoint or areas areas of improvement, um, he can definitely be a little bit slow to locate the ball at times. So his his instincts are not as sharp as what you'd like to see for from a kid who played five years of big time college football. Um, his awareness for oncoming blockers will need to improve. I think his feet will drift along with his eyes in zone coverage, so he can get pulled out of out of uh, position at times. He looks lost when covering space versus um versus in man how he plays in man coverage i think he could have a hard time shedding blockers at the next level so that's something he's going to have to work on he'll occasionally overrun blockers and the field vision is questionable he kind of um the term you see sometimes is he plays he plays through a straw he has kind of limited field vision but there's a lot there to like in terms of athleticism and the frame and just natural playmaking ability and if you can fix some of the angles and some of the instinctive things, I think Hopper is a guy who could really provide a lot of value um, in late day two, early day three. I have a 73 on him. I could see him being graded anywhere from a mid, like a late third to a mid fourth. Um, but his athleticism is going to get him a spot and he's going to contribute on special teams right away. Yeah, those traits guys can always find a place. Um, typically, if they can't get on the field early, they can definitely kind of carve out a niche for themselves uh, on special teams, especially now with these new kickoff rules. Uh, those guys are going to have to be relatively athletic uh, on returns because uh, the return game is going to get maybe uh, ratcheted up a little bit. So you're going to have to have somebody with some speed and agility. So wouldn't be surprised if he made it. Um, so this class i mean you know it jamie has not been the most fun to watch and uh <laughs> finding a sleeper has not been the easiest thing because there's some really disgusting stuff on tape from several of these guys even the top guys have their question marks but after the first four or five it gets dark my sleeper is jalen ford begrudgingly out of texas uh, there's some things to like about ford overall i'd say he's Number one, one of the reasons why I selected him is because I was looking for more of like guys who fit more of the Mike linebacker mold, because like I mentioned before, mm -hmm. I think they need more of a true Mike to kind of come in and take over for Perriman once his time is over. Uh, so mm -hmm. for me, Ford is more of a right place, right time player when it comes to, uh, you know, his linebacker play. He's probably one of the more instinctual guys in the class. Um, his experience in football IQ really show up in pre-snap communication and eye discipline. He doesn't really get fooled by a lot of uh, pre-snap stuff, or as Jamie refers to it, window dressing. Uh, I think he plays faster than that high 4.6 he logged at his pro day. I mean, he didn't perform. He didn't run the 40 at the combine, I don't believe. But at his pro day, I think he was a high 4.6 dude. Uh, but I think the reason why he looks faster on tape is because when he trusts what he sees, um, there's no hesitation. He just darts for it. Uh, he keys and gets downhill in a hurry when he's playing with confidence. So for this guy, it's really all about trusting his eyes and reacting based off of that. Uh, he cut his missed tackles down from 20 in t um, you know, last year to 14 just this past year. So I think there's some security there. He's improving, as you can see that year over year. And I think he could be a three down linebacker. Uh, 421 of his 797 snaps came in coverage. So again, there's versatility there as a three down guy. Now, as far as things not to like, there are a few. Uh, he's not super athletic, which, you know, when, typically when one of the first things you say about someone is that they're super instinctual and have high football IQ, it means they're probably not the greatest of athletes. Uh, kind of falls into that category. He relies on the IQ and instincts to make plays, so he'll need to kind of continue to be a true student of the game just to kind of like fill that athleticism gap. He's not a great run defender, especially if he can't be kept clean because he has a really hard time getting off of blocks on the inside. Like he really benefited from playing behind the wall that is Tavondre Sweat. 
So a lot of those plays that he made in the running game was because like he literally had a mountain in front of him and was able to hide. Uh, when he's sorry, ice cream truck passing at <laughs> eight thirty. That's so <laughs> weird. What kids are outside? It's dark. Anyway, who that's that's actually questionable. Hmm. I'll keep an eye on that. Anyway. When he's out of a play, he's really, really out of it. Like there just isn't a ton of juice from him to draw uh, and recover to chase on um, plays down from the backside. So again, he's just one of these guys that, from the mental side of the game, he can provide that for you. He's not completely uh, just a, a non-starter when it comes to athleticism. He's just not one of the high-end guys. So he's someone that just needs to stay in that playbook and have a thorough understanding of the defense. And I think he'll perform well. Uh, again, he'll, he'll make up the gap for not being a super star studded athlete. So with that being said, uh, the great, great isn't great. I've got him with more of a mid to um, early fourth round grade with the 67. So, you know, not fantastic, but in this class, ain't really a whole lot to draw from. So take that for what it's worth. So, after watching these guys, um, I'm sure we're probably in agreement on this. But I don't know about you. I feel like I don't want to. I don't want a linebacker in the first round, no matter where they're drafting. Even if they drop all the way back into the 20, I would not want a linebacker. I'm not even sure I want a linebacker in the second round. To be honest with you, I'm, this is a day three venture for me. What do you think? I'm right there with you. Um, I think initially before watching these guys, I was considering like Peyton Wilson, and even though like he has closer to that mid second raid around um, grade for me. A lot of that comes due to the athleticism and his processing, which is great. But again, the injuries and the fact that he's not really what I would consider a true Mike would kind of make me uh, a little skittish about drafting him that early. Uh, it would start in the third round. The problem there is, is that the guy that I think is the best fit in junior Colson may not make it that far, but I don't think they should reach for it. Um, you may have to either look at a guy later on that has some traits that you can hope to develop uh, as a contingency plan and just ride out with what you have. And maybe that guy steps up here and the coaching can uh, you know, take effect and make a more of a solid contributor year one. But I, I don't think I would go near linebacker before the third. I'm right there with you. Yeah, I just I can't see that making any sense at all with all the holes on the team. All right, let's go ahead and skip ahead to the edge players. So I'll go ahead and start. I will introduce Dallas Turner from Alabama. So Turner is, it seems like he's pretty much the consensus number one edge player in this class for, for most pundits and fans. Uh, obviously being from, from Alabama helps him in that regard. And no doubt he is a very, very good player. Uh, not sure he's the best edge player in this class, but he's very good. I think there are some things that, that really stand out about him. Number one, he has elite length. He His arms are 34 and 3 eighths inches long. He's His arms are longer than some Pro Bowl level left tackles. Uh, so kind of freakish length to go along with a very twitchy athletic ability, and he's extremely physical. All these things add up, particularly the length and the physicality, end up to him being an elite level run defender. He sets a very disciplined and physical edge. He strikes with his inside shoulder, um, leaps, I'm sorry, keeps outside, keeps his outside shoulder free to protect the edge. Uh, he jolts offensive linemen with his hand as a run defender, able to play through the offensive line at the line of scrimmage, um, shed and finish. Length and explosive lateral quickness allow him to defend two gaps. Uh, once he gets his hands on you as a ball carrier, you're going down. Uh, he is a high-level playmaker. He makes a lot of plays in the running game. Uh, he shows up tipping passes in the passing game. He did have 10 sacks. I'm not sure I would necessarily qualify him as an NFL-ready pass rusher, uh, and we'll get to that here in a minute. But the speed and change of direction – to make plays is ridiculous. Um, he He's able to finish outside of his frame and change directions, no problem. Uh, first step quickness is pretty much elite. Uh, wins with a bull rush. He flashes a rocker step, a club move, a push pull, flashes the ability to bend and dip under tackles and cross their face to get across the 
to the B gap. Uh, tackles have a really hard time holding him off if he decides he wants to make a play in the running game. He kind of has a like an alpha dog mentality in the running game in that regard. If the if Bama needed a play in the running game, particularly in third and short, fourth and short, he usually made it. Um, and he's versatile enough to play three four offensive or three four outside linebacker. He can play four three base end. He can play wide nine. He can play off ball linebacker. He covers in the slot at times. There's not much he can't do on the football field. I think as a pass rusher, he's a little underdeveloped. And this is where I kind of have some pause as him being the number one overall edge player. He's way too reliant on his bull rush. He's super athletic, super twitchy, explosive. The first step, all that is really good. But his default is to become a linear bull rusher. And his while his hands are really strong, they wane and sometimes they even stop if he doesn't win early on as a rusher. A lot of his sacks, in my opinion, are effort and coverage sacks. He doesn't win a ton of one-on-one matchups. He will on occasion, but most of his sacks are just from him pushing Lyman back into the quarterback and the quarterback holding the ball way too long. Um, he he carries his hands low and he shoots them late as a rusher and would benefit from being more aggressive with his hands earlier in reps. Uh, I'd really like to see that you can't stop me, the alpha dog mentality that he has in the running game, carry over to his pass rush. And I'd like to see him use his uh, his athleticism a lot more. Um, and I think if he could develop an inside spin move and further develop his push-pull, he'd be deadly as a pass rusher. I think he's a guy who's going to get better with NFL coaching. It just seems like he just didn't he just didn't develop his hands and his technique and his counters uh, at, at, at Alabama. So I have an 87 on Turner, I, very good player. Definitely one of the better players in this class overall, in my opinion, not my number one edge, uh, but very, very good. And he's going to be very good at the next level. I think he's a guy who can start at Sam. He can start at three, four stand up outside linebacker right away. Um, and he can play up and down the line of scrimmage as you need him to. And that alpha dog and mentality in the running game is really going to pay off and get him on the field early while he develops as a pass rusher. Yep. So you've got Turner pretty much nailed as far as um, those strengths. Uh, I think that one of the things that jumps out, and probably the same thing that everyone that watches it, is athlete, 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 and length. So those are the two things that he has off the edge, which makes him a nightmare. Uh, he often used that like superior athleticism to beat blocks when he's defending the run. So sometimes he can just get stuck on guys and get around them. Um, he won't necessarily need technique. He'll just be quicker, more explosive to beat tackles at tight ends. Um, he showed some scheme versatility at Bama. Like, you know, you mentioned that he played with his hand down. Um, he's played some five tech out um, at a wide nine um, stand up edge and athleticism really shines as a pass rusher with that. Uh, it looks to me like he has a really elite first step, but he also has like the fluidity and athleticism to drop into coverage and run with tight ends. So is that uh, he deletes open space in the flats and it'll deter quarterbacks from looking to running backs as their outlets out there because he can really close that space really quickly. Uh, dude looks like he shot out of a cannon when he's in a three point stance. So it like he'll stay really low coming out of the three point, which makes offensive tackles have a really hard time getting their hands on him cleanly. And the bend is definitely there. Like he'll flatten down the line of scrimmage with ease. Um, once he has a lane to the QB, that airspace gets closed in a hurry. Duke can really, really move. So the athleticism is there, uh, bar none, hands down. I, I do think his functional strength is a bit of a question mark, like bigger, more technically sound uh, tackles. Even a few tight ends were able to night, not just neutralize him, but physically displace him off of the line of scrimmage. Like he'll struggle to share blocks when he doesn't immediately win his rep. His hands are almost like rendered lifeless. Like not that he isn't trying. He just doesn't have that in his bag to pull from, whether like that's disengaging to set the edge or getting after the quarterback. Um, I saw him use his long arm a ton. It's like one of his go tos. Like you mentioned it, bull rush, long arm, those are his things. Um, but there's not much else in his pass rushing repertoire. So he's just going to have to develop that. I liked him a lot. And a lot of that hinges on the fact that he's a superior athlete and dude's just like 
he's a menace edge rusher because he has all the makeup to be someone who can be dominant at the next level. He just needs some more development. So I actually have an 85 on him. So it was a mid second round uh, grade. So we're close there. Um, I think that he has all the tools, especially if he can get with, uh, you know, a guy that coaches linebackers, the edge guys that can help him with that technique. I think he'll definitely be a big time player at the next level. Yeah, I think he's going to be really, really good. And like I said, I think the thing that's going to serve him the best early on is his ability to play in the running game. Um, he's just, when he decides he wants to make a play, he usually does. And he seems to take those, those, uh, run support edge setting responsibilities really seriously, which is something some, some edge players struggle with coming out. So he's already ahead of the game, I think, uh, compared to a lot of edge players. He wants to do both, right? Like some yep. guys just want to be finesse edge rushers and get after the quarterback. This dude has no problem. Like, you know, hunkering down and setting a solid edge. He actually, one thing I wanted to mention, he played the exact same amount of snaps in 22 and 23, but he actually doubled his sack production year over year. And though he's still not, you know, a polished edge rusher, he's winning a lot of these reps just off sheer athleticism and, um, you know, converting speed to power. So just a lot to work with there. All right. Why don't you introduce Jared Verse for us? Yeah, Mr. Verse, 6'4", 254 pounds out of Florida State. So first things first, man, dude's just like a brute off of the edge. Uh, he can win with power in both the run game, setting the edge or plowing through offensive tackles and tight ends on his way to the quarterback. Uh, his punch off the edge is one of the best I've seen from an edge rusher, like in a while. He uses it to jar guys at the snap against the run. And then like often it'll force anything designed to the outside towards his direction or directly at him to have to redirect because, you know, there's no leverage that either the tackle or a tight end gets against them. So it forces running backs to maybe have to cut back inside into help or where there's absolutely nothing, and he'll cause some um, tackles for loss. Even if he doesn't make the play, he's contributing to blowing it up. Uh, he consistently flashed the ability to convert speed to power, and he rushes with really good balance. He hardly ever looks out of control in pursuit. And I love the way he chains together moves like off of his power or bull rush um, tackles really find themselves playing with too much forward lean, expecting him to run through their chest. And instead he'll catch them off balance with a rip or a hesitation step into a swim. So he's got a couple moves that I was really, you know, really surprised to see because again, he's more of a power rusher, but he has a little bit um, in his tool bag as a rusher as well. If he wants to do a little bit more from the finesse side. So that's developing um, as far as the knocks on him. Um, his hips aren't overly fluid. Like he has some bend when he's rushing, but he isn't all that agile um, when attempting to move laterally and when having to change direction. Uh, it's just you know an athletic thing. You don't have it. You don't have it. Some guys just don't um, and they're able to compensate for it in other ways. But verse is a little tight. Uh, his pad level needs more consistency. Like he can really get caught being too high at times. And it often happens when he rushes out of a two point stance. That's the other thing. I think he's more of a hand in the dirt guy. He just kind of looks like a fish out of water in a two point. Um, though I'm a fan of like the power he displays in the run game, I was a little put off by his tackling technique. Like there were a few times he failed to finish when attempting to wrap guys up. It almost looks like it may be a length issue. Um, I believe he measured in at a little over 33 inch arms length. So it's not horrible, but just something, I don't know, something looks a little off there. And there were instances where like, his lack of lateral agility allows shiftier guys to make a miss in the open field. Uh, like I said before, I don't love him as a stand-up rusher. He just doesn't have the same juice as when he's in the three-point stance. I think if you're looking at, we're talking just fits here, he's probably like the consummate edge defensive end bully that mentor would want in like that 4-2-5 that he also like ran at Michigan. I think a guy like Verse would fit very, very well in there, especially if you're sacrificing – um, beef up front in your front four um, you probably want somebody who's a little bit more powerful on the edge so I think verse fits pretty well there if they were to go that route um, I liked him didn't love him but I guess again it all kind of depends on what you're looking to do defensively in the scheme I think he would fit and I gave him a was that a uh, late second round grade with an 82. Oh wow okay we're we're we differ quite a bit on verse I so this is actually interesting I watched the first three edge guys back in like December. And I must've been having a really bad day because I hated <laughs> all of them. Um, and then I went back and rewatched them 
over the last week or so and had a completely different opinion of of everybody. So I guess Jamie was in a better mood the second time around than he was in the first time, the first time around. But I, I really liked verse. I thought verse was a guy who, um, he, he basically can do it all. Um, he's got a really explosive first step. He's quick to locate and make plays on the ball, uh, capable of winning with speed, power, technique, and effort. He uses his hands extremely well. He really batters and attacks blockers with his hands, uses them also really well to soften the edge as he's turning the corner. His bull rush is about as good as it gets. He also uses a crossover step, a club move, a dip and rip, a stab, and a swim. And like you mentioned, he's one of the guys in this class who strings moves together. Um, So he doesn't necessarily stall out at times because he's able to, to, to combine moves to get to the quarterback. Um, you mentioned he plays behind his pads. Um, he plays with really good leverage and frequently plays through blockers in the running game. Uh, I thought there was pretty good lateral quickness at times. Uh, it wasn't super consistent, but it flashed, uh, closes on QBs like a bat out of hell, uh, punishing physical tackler. And I agree with you. I think he's, he's at his best in a three point stance. I didn't like him as much standing up, um, as I did with his hand in the dirt. Um, some things, not necessarily areas of concern, but things to watch. His frame might be a little bit maxed out. There is a bit of a length issue there that shows up in tackling. I th- I also think it's a form issue. It looks to me like he's going for the knockout shot quite a bit, and he just misses. Um, he misses more tackles than he should when he's got guys dead to rights. Um, I think the tendency to tackle high could make him a target for penalties, particularly in the pocket. Uh, the pass rush can stall a little bit when he loses the punch. And again, I think that's, um, I think that's a length thing. Um, he lacks some sand in the pants, so he can be moved out of his gap by block by dry blockers at times. Um, the best example of this, and I mentioned this in my OT show, um, Graham Barton abused him. Um, when, when Florida state played Duke, I mean, there were several reps where Barton ran him five or six yards into the defensive backfield in the running game. He just, he couldn't, he couldn't get free. It was like Michael Orr, you know, running that kid off the field in the blind side. It, it looked like that on multiple yeah. occasions. Nasty. Uh, yeah. Very nasty. Um, he can sometimes be too hasty to get up field and run himself out of plays. Um, and like I mentioned, he can get overwhelmed by bigger blockers at times, but still, very, very good. I have an 88 on verse. So I have a an early second. He's probably going to wind up being one of the top 12 to 15 players in my draft class when all is said and done. Um, he's a immediate starting 4-3 base end. He can play some wide nine. Uh, he can play some seven technique. You can stand him up in certain packages. It's not something I want to do down to down, but you definitely can. Um, I think he's a guy who's going to exceed. He's going to succeed right away because he's so advanced from a technical standpoint. No, I agree. Um, I think there's a lot to work with there. I think uh, one of the biggest things that I mentioned is is I'm just looking at it from a versatility standpoint. How versatile really is he? Are there going to be some limitations athletically if you're asking him to maneuver out in space? Like I said, he's just a little tight hip, but I definitely see all the positives. And again, it's about fit. Um, And in this particular defense, I think a guy like that could really wreak havoc. So uh, moving on here to the next guy up to bat, take a stab at a Latu. I'm going to say the name wrong. Latu, Latu. So for my money, Latu is the best edge in this class. Um, And I say that for a couple of reasons. One is, He's a comp- he's a very aware player, uh, both in terms of football awareness and in terms of self awareness. Um, when I watched his twenty twenty two tape, I was not a fan. In particular, I I didn't like the way he played against the run. I didn't feel like he was a guy who was stringing moves together or had much of a plan for getting to the quarterback. Um, But all of that changed in 2023, and I think the growth that he showed in 2023 says a lot about his football character and just who he is as a kid, and I think it's going to serve him really well moving forward um, at the next level. Uh, I I just feel like he's he's the complete package. Uh, He sets a really disciplined physical edge. 
he's able to really beat up guys um, as a, he with his speed and quickness as a five technique when he lines up inside and in rush packages. Um, he wears out OTs and blocking tight ends uh, with his hands. He he throws offensive linemen out of his way to finish in the run game on a regular basis. Surges up field with a really good first step. The hands are highly educated and NFL ready. He slaps, rips, clubs, swats, stabs, um, wins with sudden speed, hand technique, and really freakish bend and dip. I mean, his ability to flatten the edge and turn the corner is really, really impressive. Uh, Leatu just kind of glides around the edge. He makes it look easy. If, if he's even with you in two steps, he's around the edge in his third step, maybe his fourth step at the most. Um, he's very productive on games and stunts, just has a really good feel for finding the gaps. The motor never stops. He understands how to convert speed into power, um, has a really good well-timed bull rush, um, consistently penetrates and disrupts versus the run. Uh, and I think, like I mentioned earlier, he knew what he needed to work on after last season, after the 2022 season and came back really polished and NFL ready. At, at a level that he was really nowhere close to after 2022. And he's created with his rush tempo and his angles and his plan. He never really takes the same approach on back-to-back -back plays. There's always a different wrinkle. He'll give somebody, he'll give the offensive tackle one shoulder to attack, kind of shrinking his, his strike space. Um, he'll, he can jump to the, the B gap when he needs to. It's just very, very impressive. I think the concern obviously is the neck injury. Is he going to pass medicals? Is he the guy that teams are going to want to take, spend a first round pick on? Uh, I haven't heard what his medicals turned out as turned out like at the combine, but I haven't heard anything saying that he did not pass his medicals. So that's encouraging. Um, he's going to need to convert to work on developing his NFL body. Uh, whereas verse and Turner are kind of ready for the NFL from a physical standpoint, from the way that they've sculpted their bodies Latu's body is kind of, he's kind of averagely built. He's not super twitchy. He's not like jacked or anything like that. So he's going to have to add some functional strength and continue to refine his body. Um, there are times when he can struggle to anchor against bigger blockers. Um, and the lack of bend in his knees can sometimes cause him to lose leverage and his rush can stall. He doesn't really have the same juice that, um, that Turner and verse have in pursuit. Uh, the play break, the playmaking range is probably likely going to be limited to inside the box or maybe just outside the box. He's not going to be a sideline to sideline guy. He lacks ideal length. I'm not sure he's capable of manning more than one to one and a half gaps. Um, uh, to me, Latu is a three, four outside linebacker. He can reduce inside on third down, maybe play some base end, but he's going to be standing up in the NFL and he's going to rely on his athleticism, his ability to bend and his ability to string moves together to get to the quarterback and make plays in the running game. I he's my number one. I have a 90 on him. So a late first round, early second round pick, and he's probably going to wind up. My guess is in my top 10 players overall. Yeah, we see lots of similarly. Um, he's my number one edge rusher. So I'll get that out of the way also. Uh, but I just want to give hats off to the guy for persevering through a neck injury that literally threatened to end his career while he was at Washington. Flip side to that is it's super scary to have neck injuries like that of that sort in a game like football. Uh, hopefully the medicals work out well and he has a long, healthy career. Um, but that is scary. And I wouldn't be surprised if some teams just shy away from him based on that. But outside of the, you know, the health, this is the most refined air, edge rusher in this class hands down. Um, he's an elite hand fighter. We, you talked about this already. Like his mitts are quick and he uses them masterfully, like very little wasted motion. The dude already plays with the mindset of a vet. So at the snap, there's a plan A, a B and C to win. So, you know, you're, you're not just going to shut him down or uh, negate, you know, his pass rush. Like after the second counter, he's got more in his bag to pull from like what he lacks in on field athleticism he makes up for in technique and anticipation. So even when he isn't the strongest or most nimble of guys, he's almost never overmatched. Um, I saw a little bit of everything from him as a pass rusher when we're talking about chaining together moves, um, setups with swims, dipping rips, clubs, 
and rips arm overs, even the occasional bull rush. Like he's not the strongest guy, but when you have that much in your bag, you can catch offensive tackles off guard with bull rushes because they don't anticipate it. If it's not something that they've seen from you or you don't use with great regularity. Uh, he has like the equivalent of Batman's utility belt at his disposal. When we're talking <laughs> about moves like, he makes fools out of interior offensive linemen when he reduces down inside, because along with the moves that he possesses, he's also just too quick for him. Uh, with that being said, there are some knocks, definitely not the strongest of edge defenders, like bully offensive tackles seem to give him a pretty difficult time, even on passing downs. Like if they can cleanly get their hands inside into his chest plate, he can be steered and neutralized. Uh, he's probably got like an average first up. Uh, it's not, you know, terrible. Um, it flashes here and there, but uh, he won't blow you away consistently or strike fair in the heart of tackles and make them like feel like they need to overset in order to compensate uh, at the prospects of being beat by his speed. Um, again, you mentioned this also, the functional strength isn't great. So I'm not asking him to consistently set an edge. Um, the instincts and technique will only get you so far when you, you know, have to anchor down and out leverage guys that outweigh you by like 50 plus pounds, 20 plus times a game. So uh, it's just going to be a situation where you ask him to do what he does best. And I mean, that will come with uh, some sacrifice there in the run game a bit. But again, he's really skillful, so he'll be able to figure it out, I think. Uh, I liked him a lot. Like I said, he's my number one edge guy as well, and I gave him an 87 overall, so not that far off from you. you know, high second round, uh, talking about late first round grade around that area. So uh, would not be surprised if he is near the top of the class. Again, the neck injury might scare some teams off. It's probably going to be the thing that stops him from being the first edge rusher off of the board. Um, and again, not being the most athletic just depends on what teams are looking for. You're talking about traits and someone you can coach up. You're probably going to go with one of the other guys that we spoke to. If you're looking at somebody who's just ready day one to come out and be a high level performer from a technique standpoint, lot too, you can't really miss on that. Yeah, he's, he's going to be a good one. And I think I mentioned it earlier and I just feel like it's something we need to stress when we're talking about law two is, you know, with as much tape as we watch and you watch guys struggle with the same things from year to year, you know, if, if we watch two or three years of tape on one guy, I know, I don't know about you, Craig, but for me, I'm watching guys and I find something in year one and I'm like, Ooh, that was rough. Hopefully he fixes, he fixes that. Hopefully he works on that. And then year two, it doesn't change. And year three, it doesn't change. And you're like, what are we doing here? Like, these are things that you're consistently struggling to execute. What are your coaches doing and why aren't you fixing this? And with Latu, you watch his 22 tape and you're like, eh, he can't stop the run. He gets moved out of his gap too often. There doesn't have a, a rush plan. He can't string counters together. And then you watch his 23 tape and you're like, holy shit, he figured everything out mm -hmm. in one off season. Like, that is so rare and so impressive that I think it's something you really have to commend him for of not just working on it, but recognizing it and fixing pretty much everything in what? Six months, seven months. You talked I about mean, it. Self-awareness. Yeah. For a, for a 21, 22 year old kid to put in that kind of work and make so many corrections in his game. I think it says a lot for who he's going to be at the next level and what his upside is because there's still room for development. Um, and if somebody tells him, kid, you got to work on your body, you can bet he's going to work on his body. So the things that are still issues for him, I think are ultimately going to be figured out one way or another. And this is a kid who clearly loves the game of football. I mean, when you're talking about the injury that he sustained and the fact that, you know, he just kept working his way back until he could get on the field, transferring away from Washington over to UCLA. I mean, even at the combine, something I noticed, uh, they interviewed him just listening to him talk. He has a love for the game of football. Like some of these guys, they do it because they're good at it. Um, you know, hefty paycheck, the ability to take care of their family. All that stuff's great. This dude loves the game of football i want to say that he sat around and watched like 
all of the edge rushers perform, even in the next group after him. Watch for some teammates. Like he was on the field in Indy for a significant amount of time beyond what he needed to, just because he wanted to cheer some guys on that he was cool with or just wanted to take it all in. He he understands that the game can be taken away from you in an instant, so he doesn't take it for granted whatsoever. And, uh, you know, it's just kind of like you mentioned. Yeah, when I watch tape of guys from year to year, there has to be some differentiators. There are certain things that aren't going to change about dudes from one year to the next. Like if they have athletic limitations, there's only so much they can do about that. I really check for improvement in technique because it shows me how much work you put in, but it also tells me a lot about, the people that you're working with and how much time and effort they put into you and how good they are at their job. Because if they can bring that out of you year over year, um, I think it says a lot about the coaching staff, but even more so about the player because dudes don't make these type of leaps technically from one year to the next without like living, breathing and sleeping the game. Yeah, it's, it's really something. I mean, you can see it in the way that he plays the game that he's relishing every single rep and it's hard not to, I, I, I'll rephrase that. It's easy to root for a guy like that when mm-hmm. you can tell he's, he came so close to losing the game and now he's back and it's like, he's going to make, make every rep count. And you, you don't get that in NFL players and you don't, you definitely don't get that from a lot of college players. So it's, it makes him fun to watch and easy to root for. Agreed. Um, all right. So. What, well, let's well tell, me, tell me really quickly, what are, you, what are your edge rankings? Yeah, I was just going to get to that. So yeah. um, my edge rankings are – so I'll give you my top four. I'll start with number four. Um, my number four is Chop Robinson from Penn State with an 83. Actually, you know what? I'll give you um, – I'll give you my top five. My top five are Darius Robinson from Missouri with a 79. Chop Robinson from Penn State with an 83 is my number four. My number three is Dallas Turner with an 87. My number two is... Jared Verse with an 88, and my number one is Layatu Latu with a 90. Sweet. So we've got a little bit of difference here. Um, so I'll give you my top five. Actually, number five is a tie for me. Um, I've got Darius Robinson and Chris Braswell uh, with 76s. Uh, number four is going to be Chop Robinson with the 78. Number three, Jared Verse, 82. Uh, number two, Dallas Turner with the 85, and Leatu Latu with an 87 is my number one. Yeah, I I can't argue too much with any of those rankings. Um, we, you know, we go back and forth where one of us is higher on another, but we're all pretty much in the same ballpark. Mm-hmm. So, um, interesting. Sweet. So, we've got our sleepers on deck here. Um Tell me a little bit about the guy that you went with, Jamie. So my sleeper is Utah linebacker Jonah Ellis. Um, Ellis is very much a traits guy. He's long, athletic, has a really quick first step. Um, he wins with speed. He wins with bend. Uh, he's just a very explosive athlete. Um, he plays every rep like his hair is on fire. He'll drop into coverage, and he does pretty well in zone. Um, there, there are a lot of things to like about him. I think the thing with him is he's very raw. Uh, for somebody who is athletic as he is, he tends to lean on a bull rush. Uh, his hands are not overly developed. So if he doesn't win right away, his rushes will stall, and his hands will kind of stop, and he just kind of sticks to blockers. Um, he, could be a, he could stand to be a little bit more aware of where blockers are coming from in the running game. Um, and I think, you know, obviously he's got to learn to string some counters together. Um, and he's probably going to have to get a little bit stronger. He's, he's extremely tall. I think he's like six, four or six, five, and he plays at like two thirty five, if I'm not mistaken. So he's going to have to add some functional strength and bulk up a little bit for the next level. But if you're looking for kind of a, a speed rusher, a guy who can bend a guy who can compliment like Thule and Bosa and Mac, 
Um, I think Ellis is a guy that you could probably get in the, you know, late day two range. Maybe, maybe he falls into the the early day three. Uh, I have a seventy five on him. Okay, cool. I haven't had a chance to check Ellis out, but I've I've seen some good things about him. So for me, uh, my guy, as far as the sleeper is concerned, is going to be Austin Booker out of Kansas. Another tall, lengthy cat. So Booker's going at about 6'4 and a half, 240 pounds. And if you want like a blank canvas or unmolded clay to form into something potentially scary, then this is the dude that's like a prime candidate for it. His length and first up quick quickness are the first thing that jumped off of tape um, to me. He looks like a condor off the edge. Like those arms are super long and he can use them to keep tackles and tight ends at bay right at the snap. Sometimes like if he's able to shoot his hands quickly, he can use that length so effectively that tackles realize they're not able. It's like they look confused. They're not able to get their hands on him at all because his arms are so long that they can't grab on anything. They're not able to get into his pad, sometimes not even to the outside. Um, and so like, because he has such great reach, he uses it almost too often. It's really kind of what he leans on. Uh, but he can utilize that to make tackles panic in that footwork. And then that falls apart and he's able to kind of utilize that to get after the quarterback. He, he displays a bit of a pass rush bag. Like I've seen a pretty decent push pull, even a spin move that he'll set up ever so often. So he's just got a couple things that he'll kind of sort of overuse so there's definitely some development that needs to happen there but he has this really uncommon blend of length and speed that make him like a natural disruptor on the edge so even if he isn't making the plays he's still affecting them uh as far as some of the knocks he's super green and inexperienced um i think he's like a red shirt sophomore he's only played in 17 games he's not someone you want setting the edge day one He's kind of thin in his lower half, and he's going to need to spend like significant time in a quality strength and conditioning program. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge, Chargers. <laughs> uh, he's way too reactionary as a pass rusher. It's annoying, actually. Like his pass rush plan is based off of what the tackle does. Like every once in a while, he'll, you know, he'll get off the line of scrimmage and he'll try to make something happen immediately. But way too often he's just kind of waiting to see how the tackle sets and then he'll try to be reactionary off of that and the thing is like when you're an athlete you can get away with that at times it's the next level every millisecond counts so that won't fly um he's very seldom the aggressor he'll have to work on that while he can play as a five tech i think he's best served to start his career as like a situational rusher deployed from like a two-point stance until he can like add some more weight and functional strength and uh, get some additional technique refinement. But as far as like, again, a high level athlete with length and decent bend, this is one of those guys that you want to take a flyer on. Um, you're talking about maybe like, and I have, I'm sorry, get ahead of myself. I've got him with a 72. So a, a low third round grade. He's going to be one of those guys that he might end up finding his way sneaking into the back end of the third round, early fourth, and somebody's going to have a gym because, again, he's super raw, but he's got all those things that you want from an edge rusher um, that while he's developing his skill set and you're refining him, he can still lean on those things that he has that is just more so an advantage for him over tackles in the league. Like that length is something you can't teach. That first step can't get around that. Um, so, I liked him quite a bit. He's somebody I would love the Chargers to get their hands on. I think he can be groomed and set up for success in short order. And you're talking about here in a couple of years. I mean, we don't know how much longer you're going to be looking at Bosa and Mac. Uh, you're going to have to start coming up with the plan behind those guys. And I know they've got some cats that are on the roster currently that have some promise. But when we're talking about just a sheer athlete and somebody with just the traits, things you can't teach, Austin Booker is one of those cats that I would want in my program developing, um, looking at, you know, a guy that can really contribute here day one situationally, but in the next two to three years, someone who can really be uh, a name in the league. All right. Well, Everybody, thank you for tuning in. Uh, we appreciate your patience while we figured out the technical issues. Hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, I know we enjoyed sharing it. So real quick, let's just go over our um, our top 
five at each position one more time yep. to wrap up the show. So, Craig, why don't you go ahead and start with your top five linebackers? Yep, top five linebackers from five to one. Number five, we've got Cedric Gray, the 73 overall. Number four, Jeremiah Trotter with the 75. Number three, Edrin Cooper, 77. Junior Colson comes in at number two with an 80. And Peyton Wilson, number one with an 84. My top five are Junior Colson with a 72. My sleeper, Tyron Hopper with a 73. Peyton Wilson with a 77 is number three. Edrin Cooper is my number two with an 80. And Cedric Gray is my number one with an 82. And I will give you my top five pass rushers. And I just gave these to you a few minutes ago. But once again, number five is Darius Robinson with a 79. Uh, Darius Robinson from Missouri. Um, Number four is Chop Robinson with an 83. Number three is Dallas Turner with an 87. Jared Verse is Jared Verse, excuse me, is number two with an 88. And Layatu Latu is my number one edge rusher with a 90. Yep. So as far as my guys go, you can say 5A and 5B because it's a tie there. I've got Darius Robinson and Chris Braswell with the 76s. Uh number four, Chop Robinson, 78. Number three is Jared Verse with an 82. Dallas Turner comes in at number two with an 85. And my number one edge rusher on the board is Latu Latu with an 87. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, uh, once again for joining us. We really appreciate it. We appreciate all the support. Uh, please stay tuned. We have a pretty big announcement coming out here pretty soon, something that we just found out about tonight, and we'll be rolling it out here pretty soon. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, please continue to like, follow, and subscribe on Twitter and YouTube and keep giving us that support. And uh, we will see you, I think, on Sunday for another show, which is – what is the show next week? Who do we have up next? It is – are we on receivers next? No, no, I think that's – hold on. Uh, let's see, April 7th, tight ends. Okay, close enough. <laughs> so, all right, so we'll be covering tight ends on Sunday. Thank you all once again. We really appreciate it, and we will see you next time. Salute.